every dog makes a great pet, but only very few make great heroes. This is the story of one dog who was discovered to be a puppy prodigy and went on to save an entire town. When he was born in 1913, Togo did not look like he could do great things. In fact, he didn't look very remarkable at all. He was one of the smallest of the litter and his black, brown, and gray fur made him look dirty. On top of that, at first he was very sick. He had a painful throat disorder and he required a lot of care. His owner was a Norwegian-born man named Leonard Seppla, who had come to live in Nome, Alaska. A breeder and racer of Siberian Huskies, Seppla had no interest in an undersized, unfit dog like Togo. To a musher, Togo was useless. Not only was he sick, but when he recovered, he became quite a nuisance. When Seppla would harness up a team of dogs to go sledding, Togo would run around the yard nipping at them, making it hard to leave on time. Fed up with his antics, Seppla gave Togo away when he was six months old. Maybe he would make a good house pet. But Togo had other plans. After only a few weeks at his new home, Togo took his chance to escape. He jumped right out the window and ran, all the way back to his first home several miles away. When Seppla saw Togo, he couldn't believe it. Impressed, he decided not to give the young dog away again. But Togo did not get any easier. He would chase the teams whenever Seppla would harness them. Sometimes he would run alongside his owner and became a distraction to other dogs. Togo would even attack the lead dogs of other teams. When he got badly mauled one day, Togo finally learned to stop, but the rest of his antics continued. One day, Leonard had to leave on an important assignment. He didn't have time for Togo. He tethered the dog inside the kennel with clear instructions, do not let him free until the team has gone. But only moments after Seppla left, Toga broke free and jumped the seven-foot-high fence. His hind leg got caught and the mesh had to be cut to get him out. Togo did not wait. Bleeding, he immediately got up and ran throughout the night. By morning, he had chased the departing team down. Seppla saw Togo running towards the team, who had been excited almost all night. Now Seppla understood why. When Togo got close enough, he began to nip the ears of the lead dog wanting to play. Seppla had enough. Although Togo was too young and small for a harness, Seppla attached him to the team. To Seppla's utter surprise, Togo loved to be part of the team. On the very first day, the musher was able to make him the second lead dog, and Togo was able to make the 75-mile journey, something unheard of for an inexperienced sled dog. That's when Leonard Seppla realized that Togo was no ordinary dog. He was a puppy prodigy. Togo joined the team officially and soon became the lead dog. It was a few years later when crisis struck in the town of Nome. A strange disease spread like fire. A few of the children in the town became sick with what seemed like tonsillitis. But then the cases grew and soon children began to die one after the other. Dr. Curtis Welch, the only doctor in the small town, knew then this was not tonsillitis but diphtheria, a deadly disease. To make matters worse, the town's diphtheria antitoxin supply had expired. The whole town was at risk of endemic and certain death. Without the antitoxin, the mortality rate could be 100%. There was no way to receive a shipment. The port was closed for the winter. The only way in or out of the town was a dog sled team. The town turned to Seppla. He was 47 years old and Togo was 12. Both passed their prime for such a grueling run, but everyone knew they could trust them to successfully complete what would be the most important journey of their lives. Dr. Welch sent radio telegrams to all other major towns in Alaska, notifying them that Nome was in danger. With the help of nearby towns, a total of 20 sled teams would relay the serum from one end of Alaska to Nome, a journey of almost 700 miles. This run would be called the Great Race for Mercy. When Seppla's team, with Togo in the lead, set out, the towns decided to shorten each run to let the dogs rest. This information never reached Seppla. Soon after their decision, a blizzard was beginning to tear across Alaska. 
the instructions changed even further. The teams were asked to halt at the roadhouses where they planned to make the serum exchange. Word never reached Sepla regarding the change of plans. In the blizzard, on ice, Sepla continued to push his dogs. Unable to see, he relied completely on Togo. At one point, Togo raced them across the ice as it was breaking beneath them. He saved his entire team from certain death, for if they had fallen through the ice, the serum would have been lost and hundreds would have died. Togo and his team ran nearly five times more than any other team covering a grand total of 261 miles. The serum successfully reached the last sled team and an entire town was saved. Togo died a few years later at the age of 16. Afterwards, Sepla said, I had found a natural born leader, something I had tried for years to breed. For saving not only his team, but an entire town, Togo the sled dog was an animal hero.